Well hey guys, I uh, just wanted to do a quick video today on behind the scenes of my previous live jam. Uh, I've had a few people on social media ask me all about uh, what gear I've got and how I connect it all up and so I thought I'd go through it. So uh, hope you enjoy it, uh, leave some comments below, tell me what you think, um, don't forget to subscribe, there's going to be another video after this one as well, uh, more about this later. Cheers. So here's the diagram. I've drawn up this diagram in a way to hope to make it easier for you guys to see how I've set this up. So let's have a quick look. We'll start with just a little bit of housekeeping. In this diagram, you will notice there's lines. Black lines are uh, indicating USB, blue, uh, audio, um, they're the analog audio cables. Red is MIDI and we're going to use green to signify aux or sends or fx and we'll get to that a bit later so basically the whole setup stems around the mx1 here's the mx1 um you can see my hand it's a live view so basically the MX-1 is the central part of this whole setup. All cables and connections go through the mixer. In this diagram, I've drawn some connections. And this is the back panel of the MX-1. And hopefully this will make it nice and easy for you guys to understand. This back panel shows inbound and outbound connections. USB, MIDI, MIDI and audio. So we'll start off by looking at the PC side of things. Okay, let's move down to here on the diagram. So I use a Mac and the MX1 is plugged into my DAW, which is Ableton Live. And I use that as the master clock. So let's have a quick look at my screen of the actual session that I recorded for that live jam. So here it is, the session that I actually recorded. And if we go to the tracks, you'll see my output track was 10. And this is the actual recording that I made of that jam. In this particular setup, we have the audio input device as the MX1. The audio output device is also the MX1. And that's important because we need to use the MX1 to receive audio from the DAW. So the track that I want the actual MX1 to receive is, is this track, track 11, which contains some, some MIDI sequence and it's playing uh, a sample and the sample's been all sliced up and the MIDI sequence plays all these slices. And in the actual uh, tune, this is the bit where the guy talks. We want your credit, your bank, your history, your ancestry. Okay, so you can hear that is actually going through the Mac into the mixer. Now, let me just um, scoot back over to the mixer, the actual live view of it. So we'll just start that sequence again. Let's get the audio happening. We want your credit, your bank, your history, your ancestry. Your phone, your contacts, their phone, when you're home. So you can see, we want your lunch. You can see that I can control what comes out of Ableton whilst I'm actually playing audio through that, back through and recording into the same DAW. So it's, it's pretty cool. One important thing before we finish up here in Ableton is that 
we are using the master clock. This is set to a tempo of 112. And you can see here, if I press play on here, you'll see that's going at 112. And back over to the Their phone when you're home. You'll see that sync is on PC. Over on back on the DRBW, you can see all the audio channels. So I'm going to go through what's connected to all these audio channels. And the cool thing is that you can record them all individually. And you can also record the MX1's performance in channel 17 and 18. So it's easy to get confused with that channel 17 and 18, but we have output back through. And because we've set the audio to go to sends only, we don't get that feedback. So it's pretty cool. So let's go back to the diagram. We're gonna look at these connections here, the black lines going into those USB ports. They're the error host or USB. Some other role and products can be plugged into there as well. So the cool thing about this is there's four times two channels, which is a total of eight channels or four stereo inputs, and they can carry a MIDI also. So you don't actually have to use these as a physical. You can use these as a DAW and you end up with another eight channel, eight mono channel, and it's actually pretty handy. They carry MIDI and one USB number three. You'll notice that it says bus powered. So that's actually pretty handy. You can power something from one of them. So let's have a look at input number one, and you'll see that is channel nine slash 10. It's a stereo channel, and that's our TR8. So the TR8 is just purely taking audio and USB start, stop, MIDI, just over one cable. And that's brilliant. And that's all we need. The sequence is already programmed to the TR8. So USB 2, go back to there, follow USB 2, and you'll see that that's the VT3, which is a voice effects unit, part of the error range. And I'm using this to take an audio import from my Korg sampler. Called Electribe Sampler. And the reason for this is because the sampler is purely just audio clips that I'm launching during the performance. And I want to have that VT3 style effects going into the recording. USB 3 and 4 are both the boutiques. Now, specifically, USB 3 is that bus powered one. So that one powers the JX03 and it's just one cable, beautiful. The JU06, I need to get this special cable. This cable here, I got from um, the Archeria beat step, I think it was. That one enables me to send audio out of one side. It's actually labeled too, it says one says power or PWR and the other one says uh, PC. So that sorts the problem out with powering and USBing into the MX1, a boutique that isn't getting the bus power. One thing else you'll notice on the JX03 and the JU06 is there's a MIDI cable in between the two. It kind of got a bit crazy with the setup. So I'll explain that when we get to the MIDI session. Each of these devices is assigned a MIDI channel and I can access them through my MIDI controller during the performance. Let's now go and have a look at the blue connections, which are our analog audio connections. And as you can see here, I hopefully have made it nice and neat for you. So let's look at input number one, which is the Chaos Pad Quad. Now I'm using the Chaos Pad Quad as similar to the VT3 I was doing before as an effects unit that's taking audio input from the drum brute. The drum brute has that, that analog sound, but I just wanted to give it a bit of an oomph with, I don't know, like, like an effect. Um, so that's why we got that. That you can hear that 
sort of jetty sound. So back to the Chaos Pot Quad, and you can see that's input one. Input number two is the Base Station 2. One of the good things about the Base Station 2 is it takes USB power. Uh, so I've actually just powered that straight off the, the PC or the Mac, and it also sends MIDI clock and data. So I can sync that Base Station to Ableton, the DAW. So when I want to use the sequencer inbuilt into this, it keeps it in sync with the tune. Input number three, let's go have a look at that. Input number three, and there it is there, the mini log. The Korg mini log, standalone in this performance, there's no MIDI sequencer used in this, so I just played it live. You'll notice there's a dotted line coming out of there. That's related to sends, and we'll talk about that later. Input uh, four is the Novation circuit, which we're just using for one sequenced uh, synth track on this. Just a very simple thing. And it's also controlled by MIDI. Um, we'll come back to that in a sec. Input five and six. Let's follow that one round. And that pops into the ESQ1. In the video, you don't see the ESQ1, but it's definitely there. And I was controlling it from my key step. That's a great segue into the MIDI. So let's look at the key step and the MIDI setup, which are our red line links. So the key step takes its clock from the USB, which is plugged into the Mac. Therefore, the DAW controls the tempo. Now I'm using the arpeggiator on this particular song and it comes in really handy and gives a nice effect. So I've got MIDI out going into the MIDI in connection on the MX1. And then MIDI out goes into my MIDI solutions through box. Now that gives me four through outputs. One goes to the circuit, one goes to the drum brute, one goes to the Insonic, and one goes over to the JU06, which then daisy chains up to the JX03. The reason why I'm not doing the old uh, in and through daisy chaining, I prefer to use this through box because over the years, I don't really like MIDI latency, and this tends to solve those problems. So each one of these has a MIDI device allocated to it. For example, the Sonic is MIDI channel 5. And in the video, you might actually see me on the key step going shift and pressing the A note down the bottom of the keyboard there, which if you see slightly above, there's a little blue 5. That means that's setting the MIDI controller to channel 5. And so I can go from the Insonic to the JU06 to the JX03 just by a quick shift and a key press. And it's brilliant. So that, that pretty much explains the MIDI. Now let's go and have a look at this sense. So in the MX1, you can see two RCO stereo plugs. There's an AUX return and an AUX send. And I'm using the Strymon Big Sky, which has got um, a nice stereo AUX send and return connection in the back. And you'll notice the Big Sky, I've got these dotted lines coming out. One of them you saw before, which goes over to the mini log. Now this is just a virtual representation, so you would understand that when I'm using the auxiliary effects, I'm actually getting the sound from the mini log mixed with the FX pedal. So let's have a quick look at the MX1 and the mini log was coming through on channel three. And if I select that and I select AUX, 
Journal 3, you can see that there's 43, a setting of 43. And if I select some of the other channels, you'll see that that's 0, 0. And if we go to the JXO3, you'll see there's 17. And the Juno is 47. So they're, they're kind of like the level that you get with the uh, this effect send and it's actually really good so let's just have a quick look at the other two that I mentioned and you'll see they've got that dotted line in this diagram going to the big sky so yeah hopefully that explains how the sends work it's a really good thing to have actually a return on a mixer uh, a lot of mixes just have sends, and then you've got to use up one of your inputs from your FX to take it into. So before we finish up, I just wanted to show you the push because uh, that was the last thing connected in this diagram. So let's just quickly pop down to, we've got the Ableton Live representation there, and um, there's the push next to it, which is connected by USB. And there's my push. Hello. <laughs> so really all I used this for was to do that clip launch that I was showing you earlier. And so basically I just hit that little light on the pad there and off that uh, little sequence goes with the voice. And the push is a really great performance bit of kit. And, you know, in that particular uh, video, I just came over to this once, hit the button, went back to playing. And whilst that sequence was playing, I was able to go back to the key step and jam on the ESQ1 and the Juno. And, you know, it, it, it was a really sort of nice integrated moment where I didn't have to think, I just pressed a button, let that run, off I go doing other things, and it just made things really cool. Anyway, that's about it. So I will come back with another video showing the actual real gear, and we'll go through how I set the actual gear up itself, so all the synths and the drum machines and everything like that. I'll go through with those. Let me know in the comments if this is what you wanted, and. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. Catch you guys.